This is not a happy weekend for us. And Debbie's allowed me to read the message that I wrote pertaining to how I look at Memorial Day. It's not hot dogs and speed boats and going to the car races and maybe having gas over for a few drinks. That's Commander of the American Legion. It hits home. Veterans Day and Memorial Day. I'd like to read this message to you. What is Memorial Day? It means different things to different people. Is it the official start of summer? Your first chance to have a cookout? Or to invite a friend? Or is it just a three-day weekend? When I think of Memorial Day, I think of the men and women who died, not only in our country, but in foreign lands, to protect what we know is our freedom and our liberties, that we live without fear. Freedom to me is the power of the right to act speak, and think as you wish. To most Americans, freedom is the right to be yourself. Our country has not seen and never will know the true level of the sacrifices given by our veterans. Having said that, I ask for a moment of silence, remembering all veterans who serve both past and present, especially those who suffered the supreme sacrifice for this land we all call home. Decoration Day, as it was first known, is yet unclear. In early rural America, the decorating of graves was performed. It was an occasion for family and friends to gather at their loved one's graveside to place flowers, etc. After the Civil War, America's needs for a secular patriotic ceremony to honor its military dead became prominent. As monuments to our fallen soldiers were erected and dedicated, Following that, ceremonies centering on the decoration of soldiers, graves were held throughout the towns and cities across our nation. This, to me, is the real meaning of Memorial Day. Let us remember all our veterans that never returned home, leaving behind their luxuries and freedom that we enjoy on an everyday basis. Let us remember to support and safeguard their grieving families and the loved ones they left behind, especially today when their memories come alive again. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his country. And God bless you. God bless you. Where at least I know I'm free 
and I won't forget those men who died and gave that right to me, and I'd gladly stand up next to her and defend her yet today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this man. God bless the Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. 
Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His side like the world, the earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the people who hold his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame, those who make their boast in worthless idols. All gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad, and the taps of Jehovah rejoice, because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. He give thanks to his holy name. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed, In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and in trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore he will rise up and show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. Let us confess our sins before our merciful God. Merciful God. God. We, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. May your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be. So that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. the 
Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made human. He was crucified for us and in his blood. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and he sent at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with the glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will never end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We affirm one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to the life in the world to come. Amen. Our next hymn is number 439, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Said to them, 
go over before the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to pick up the stone on the shoulder according to the number of tribes of Israelites to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When they crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be memorial to the people of the Israelites forever. Pastor John, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word. They may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world will believe that you have sent me. <coughs> the glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one. I in them, and you in me, and they may become completely one, so that the world will know that you have sent me, and I have loved them, even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you, <clears throat> that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
During our Operation Enduring Freedom, Mike was sent to Aruzgan, Afghanistan. On July 25th, 2005, the troops were clearing the houses in the village of Aruzgan from snipers that were firing at them. Sergeant Schaefer was a squad leader. One of his troops went in before him and was shot in the doorway. So Sergeant Schaefer went to get him out of harm's way, pulling him from the doorway, and he was shot multiple times, mortally wounded by one of them. He died in battle on July 25th. 2005. Please remember Mike today. And I also ask you to remember Private Raymond Gould, who grew up in Little Falls, New York. He died in combat in World War II. I don't know any details of Private Gould's combat service or just how he died, but I know another soldier. Medal of Honor winner Francis Curry, who fought alongside Private Gould. And for many, many years after the war ended, I knew him as Mr. Curry. Sorry, I don't even know what his rank was to respectfully refer to him, but Mr. Curry took his family to Little Falls every summer to visit with Private Gould's family so they would share his memory together. And then we might remember the teenager who lived just across the street and in 1965 was sent to Vietnam. We don't know what happened, only that he never returned. So many people whose names we don't know whose faces we wouldn't recognize in a crowd, but their friends and family and loved ones certainly remember their names and their faces, even after all these years. Individual men and women fighting battles to uphold the rights and freedoms and beliefs that we embrace in this country. Today, I also want to remember the warriors of our faith who died claiming the belief that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. They died in the battle to keep their faith alive that they might share it with us. The apostles, they had firsthand knowledge of the one for whom they were willing to lay down their lives. Acts chapter 12 tells us that James was the first of the apostles to die for following him. He's one of the only two in the Bible that, only two, one being Judas, that described, whose death is described in the Bible. Acts 12 tells us that it was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with a sword. Early historians of the church wrote this about James' death. It appears that the guard who brought him into court was so moved when he saw him testify that he confessed that he too was a Christian. So they were both taken away. And on the way, he asked James to forgive him. James thought for a moment, then he said, I wish you peace, and kissed him. So both were beheaded at the same time for their faith. Peter and Paul were both martyred in Rome in about 66 AD during the persecution that took place under Emperor Nero. Paul was beheaded, and Peter was crucified upside down, as he had requested, since he didn't feel it was worthy to die in the same manner 
as Jesus did. At least 10 of the 12 original apostles died a brutal death. Although reports vary on the method of Matthew's death, it appears that the, and he may have lived to old age. There's about five methods that historians say by which Matthew died. Um, it may have been old age, but the only one that we know for sure died in his old age was John. But that was after having survived some very torturous events, one of which include hot, included hot oil, is the, uh, is the, I don't know, I don't want to call it a legend, but is how we understand John to have been tortured in oil and oil. Christians did not die their last deaths with the death of the disciples. Christians went on for centuries following them. We remember Stephen as the first martyr. He, I understand, was only about 23 years old. And of course, he walked with Jesus, so he too knew firsthand for whom he gave his life. But when questioned by the Sanhedrin, he did not back down. He continued to profess his faith in Christ. He was stoned by the Sanhedrin for refusing to go along with their pagan beliefs. Decades passed, but the torturous deaths did not. Early in the third century in Carthage, a wealthy young Roman woman named Perpetua who had a young son, along with her slave woman, Felicitas, who was pregnant, were imprisoned for claiming their Christian faith. Even though Perpetua's father visited her in prison before being sent to the beasts in the arena, and he pleaded with Perpetua to renounce her faith, even then, she would not. Today, the voice of the martyr reports that there are as many as 4,000 people persecuted each day for sharing the news of salvation in Jesus. Christian martyrs teach us that we can stand for God no matter what the circumstances. Millions of people throughout history have willingly died for their faith. And if they can do it, we can do it. That doesn't mean we should go out and look for suffering or persecution so that we might die for Christ. But it does mean that if given the choice to die or to deny Christ, that we would choose the former. Today is a day to remember, a special day set aside for remembering all those who have died for their freedoms and for ours. Memories can bring sadness and melancholy, but I believe that the foundation and the result of our remembrances should be mostly filled with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for the lives that were lived, for the character represented in their life-giving fight for righteousness. In the remembering, we receive strength and stamina from those who have gone before us, showing what it truly means to seek freedom, not only for ourselves, but for others. Freedom to live in a place where we can praise our God openly this morning. And freedom to move if we so choose. Freedom to express our belief in the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all that it means to us. All that we are able to understand it means to us. Because there were those fallen soldiers of our Christian army that gave their lives 
to continue to spread the good news of God's love and mercy. If Perpetua or Stephen, Peter, Paul, if, if none of them had been willing to die for their belief in our Lord and Savior, how would we even know what it is that we worship today? I'm sure God would find a way to tell us, but because of those people, our faith has survived through the words of Holy Scripture, through the writings of Christian historians. We can know God and know Him to the fullest because of the suffering of Christian warriors in the past. Just as we can know the freedoms that we have in this country because of the choice of those who have fought for those freedoms. From the beginning of God's holy word, we are told to remember. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And in so doing, we do remember each of those that have gone before us. Remember the blessings God gives us every day. The blessings of laughter and smiles and sunshine and a parent's patience and love. We thank God for all of those blessings he gives us. The prophet Nehemiah stresses the need for us to remember our Lord. Nehemiah chapter 9 says, They refused to listen and failed to remember the miracles you performed among them. They became stiff-necked and in their rebellion appointed a leader in order to return to their slavery. But you are a forgiving God, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. Therefore, you, God, did not desert them when we remember with thanksgiving what our God does for us, those memories keep us seeking God through one battle after another. Jesus' brother Jude wrote in his epistle, But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who will divide you, who follow more natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. And the Apostle Paul wrote to the Philippians, I thank my God every time I remember you. We thank God for the many lives given for our freedom. We thank God that we are able to remember all of those gone before us. And we thank God that we can draw our strength from their examples, their character, their faith, their strong beliefs. Most especially, we give thanks and praise for the life, death, and resurrection and the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose love makes us bold to remember and to continue waging a daily battle against sin, to continue living in the example of those who have gone before us. When we read from Scripture this morning, from the Gospel of John, it was Jesus himself praying for us. And he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word. Because we have the word of warriors in faith that have gone before us, we can know our Lord. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. 
And that is our prayer this morning that knowing that our Lord Jesus prays for us, we might be one of those warriors of faith that goes out in our undying pledge of our belief in God. That we can share that word with others that they might too come to know his love. A love <coughs> worth dying for. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for each and every mighty and courageous soul that has gone before us in battle. For those who fought in earthly battles, we thank you as they fought for our freedom. And for those who fought in spiritual battles, Lord, we thank them also for our freedom to believe and to know that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Amen. <coughs> In Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he teaches Christ's followers that each of us must give as we have made up our mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And now, let us give in our morning offering. Lives lost, 
with a purpose. Those who died in combat, facing death that they might help to preserve our freedoms. For those who died in persecution, that they might preserve your word. And Lord, we pray especially for those who seem to have died such senseless deaths this week. We lift up all of those in Texas, in Buffalo, in any number of senseless shootings that have occurred in our country in recent times. Lord, we question why. And we know that our weapon in this war is prayer. We come to you, Lord, fully armed with those prayers, seeking your protection for all of our children, Lord, asking that each and every school in this nation have a hedge of protection formed around it. Grant your peace to little ones that might not know you yet. Help us to spread the word of your love. It is only through love that hatred and evil will be overcome. Help us to shine your light in the darkness, Lord. When we think of speaking a harsh word, turn it into sweet words on our lips. Give us patience with others, Lord. Help us to understand those that suffer with mental illness. Lord, we seek your help. Lord, we pray for all of those also that need your help with physical illness. <coughs> Many names have been lifted before you this day, Lord, and we remember each and every one of them in our prayers. And Lord, there are many that we did not speak out loud. We pray to you now in the silence of our hearts for all of those who are in need of your healing. Lord, we know that when we ask, you answer. Thank you, Lord, for listening to our prayers. Thank you for comforting Bill and Pat. Be with them in their health struggles with Todd and John and with Tammy, with Samantha and Jeff and Jason. Lord, we pray for all families in turmoil that your will be done, that they might continue to see your blessing in their lives. Lord, we pray with thanksgiving and with joy in our hearts for the examples that you have given us in long marriages and wonderful examples of Christian faith. Lord, we thank you for Ardith and Fred and for Bob and Lorraine. We thank you for Debbie and for another year of celebration. Lord, 
In the silence, we heard, hear the birds chirping. When our hearts are most downcast, Lord, we pray that you help us to stop and listen to the bird song. Help us to remember that you care for the tiniest of creatures and how much you care for us, made in your image, Lord. Sent a Savior that we might be able to live in glory with you, Lord, for all eternity. And that while we are here on this earth, we can know your love and comfort and share that with Christians around us. Help us, Lord, to go out and share it with the many who don't know you. We're praying always in our heart together the words that our Lord Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn today is number 687, God of our Father.
Whisper your name. 